My name is Fleur van Dijk and I'm a consultant geneticist. I work in the National Diagnostic EDS Service in London, which covers the south of the UK and this service is specifically aimed at people with rare types of EDS. Today, I would like to talk about myopathic ehlers danlos syndrome. And myopathic EDS or MEDS is a rare type of EDS. It was actually first reported in 2014, which is not so long ago. And we know that now 19 individuals with a genetically confirmed diagnosis of myopathic EDS are known in the medical literature, which is really not a lot. So what are then the major clinical features of myopathic EDS? What do people with myopathic EDS have? So usually they would have muscle weakness and or muscle wasting. It is present from birth, tends to get better with age, with some worsening during their 40s. What is also an important feature is often a movement limitation of knee, hip or elbow joints due to stiffening, tightening of the connective tissue. Another feature is hypermobility or flexibility of finger and toe joints. There are also minor features of myopathic EDS. And these consist of people having a soft, sort of doughy skin. People can also have atrophic scarring, which means that the scar is usually white, that the scar tissue is fragile, giving it a wrinkly aspect. And some people refer to atrophic scarring as cigarette paper scarring. People can have motor developmental delay, which means that they are later with, for example, walking unaided. And if a muscle biopsy is taken, which happens in some people displaying muscle weakness, the pathologist can see abnormalities of the muscle fibers indicating myopathy. What is the genetic cause of myopathic EDS? Myopathic EDS is caused by alterations in the gene called 12A1. And this, this gene encodes a protein named collagen type 12. In the human body, collagen type 12 is among others found in the ligaments, the skin, and the skeletal muscle, which is muscle that connects the tissue to the skeleton. How is myopathic EDS inherited? Cool 12 e one gene alterations are mostly inherited in an autosomal dominant way. And we know that 17 of the 19 individuals published in the literature had cool 12 e one gene alterations inherited through an autosomal dominant way. And here you can see a picture of autosomal dominant inheritance. And it's important to remember that we always have our genes in pairs. So here you can see a parent who has myopathic EDS due to a cool 12 a one gene alteration, which is indicated in red. The parent also has a healthy copy of that gene. And there is another parent who has two healthy copies of the cool 12 a one gene. Each child always gets half of our genetic material and that's indicated here. So the parent with myopathic EDS can give the, the uh, cool 12 a one gene alteration or the healthy copy. And this combined with the genetic material of the other parent gives rise to four possibilities in each pregnancy. There is two out of four possibilities that the child will be affected with myopathic EDS. So in summary, if a parent has myopathic EDS, the chance for the child to inherit myopathic EDS is 50% in each pregnancy. Cool12A1 gene alterations are rarely inherited in an autosomal recessive way, which has been the case in two individuals of the 19 individuals published in the literature. And here again, you can see a picture of autosomal recessive inheritance. Again, we have all our genetic material, in, uh, we have our genes in copies. And here you can see that both parents have one cool 12 and one gene alterations, and they are not affected with myopathic EDS. 
each child gets half of our genetic material. And here you can see the possibilities that result from that, in which one out of the four possibilities, the child will be affected with myopathic EDS because it has inherited one COL12A1 gene alteration from mom and one COL12A gene alteration from dad. Can we predict the severity of clinical features based on the genetic cause? And that's an important question that's often asked by, by people with myopathic EDS or with other genetic conditions. Recessive COL12A1 alterations that lead to complete absence of collagen type 12 production cause usually severe clinical features, whilst dominant COL12A1 alterations that lead to partially abnormal production of collagen type 12 cause variable, moderately severe clinical features. So we can predict some clinical features based on the genetic cause and predominantly the severity of the clinical features. Are there conditions that resemble myopathic EDS and that we can learn from? There are other genetic conditions that are characterized by muscle weakness from birth due to disease causing gene alterations in the genes COL6A1, COL6A2, or COL6A3. And these genes encode collagen type 6. These conditions are named Bethlehem myopathy and Ulrich myopathy. An important question is, what is the management of myopathic EDS? No specific guidance for people with myopathic EDS exists, simply because there are not so many individuals reported in the literature and there's not so much experience with this condition yet. What we do know that often a neuromuscular specialist an occupational therapist or a physical therapist are involved in treating the manifestations. We think that management should focus on preventing complications and improving the presenting symptoms in people with myopathic EDS. And so physical and occupational therapy for the stiffening or tightening of the connective tissue in these people is important. And also it's important to monitor for feeding and respiratory difficulties in young children. Is there guidance for pregnant women with myopathic EDS? Again, there is no specific guidance during the pregnancy, but we can extract some advice based on the related conditions that I mentioned earlier. For example, it might be considered to do lung function surveillance or it would be also important to, to do a pre-delivery assessment for hip dislocation or contractures which could, which, could, um, which could impact the delivery. An assessment of the overall level of muscle weakness is also important. So how do we improve care for people with myopathic EDS? It's very important to learn more about the national history of more individuals with genetically confirmed myopathic EDS by simply learning more about people with a diagnosis of myopathic EDS, we will be, be able to give better advice with regard to management. It's also thought that further laboratory investigations into the function of the protein and possibilities for gene therapy are really of importance too, because it will help development of guidelines for management and potentially uh, therapy in individuals with myopathic EDS. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>